let's say, for example, you have a data-heavy game in Unity. So chances are you've already got a spreadsheet with bits of data you need, such as entity names, entity stats, anything like that, effect descriptions. So in the example of the Duels of the Roses card game, I had a giant spreadsheet with about 680 plus entries in it. I was able to export that as a CSV. CSV stands for comma separated values. It's essentially a plain text representation of your spreadsheet. So the very first entry here describes each column. So you just match the column. For example, the first one is the number. So the first value here is the card number. Second to that is the card name. Come here and you see the card name. Debt cost, 55, attribute, light, type, dragon, level, 8, attack, defense, etc. Ones that have effects will have some text after the end, and we can use all of these values to actually automatically generate scriptable objects inside of Unity. So we don't have to go and enter all 680 plus entries manually. Now, Unity provides a pretty simple way to do this through their editor scripts. So the solution that I have come up with is that you select your CSV file here. You come up and you click a menu and you click generate cards. And it'll ask you if you want to create X number of cards. It tells you where it's going to store them. And if you click create cards, it's going to take about five minutes to go through, read the CSV, and generate the cards based on that data. So how can we create this ourselves? Well, it's pretty easy. You need to create a folder called editor because this is an editor script. So it's important that it's not bundled in your build. And then I have this small class that I found on the internet called CSV Reader. This was open source and free. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's what I use. It's pretty simple. As you can see, CSV is a pretty simple format. And essentially what it does is it parses a CSV as a list of dictionaries. So essentially what that means is that each row is going to be led, read in as a dictionary. And then you'll use that dictionary object to get the properties for each entry. So what it's going to do is it's going to take each one of these rows, for example, this one right here, and it's going to turn it into a dictionary. So then you can say dictionary card number, and you'll get this value. Dictionary card name, you'll get this value. Dictionary at attribute, you'll get this value, etc., etc. But that's only one part of it. We need to actually generate the scriptable objects and figure out where we want to put them first. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating this C-sharp script. I'm going to call this YouTube CSV import. And we can pretty much erase everything here because what we are going to do is I'm going to create a YouTube namespace here. But we're going to need a public static class here because we're going to be able to access this pretty much anywhere in the editor. So we don't need an instance of it. So I'm going to call this CSV generator. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write a public static method. And this is going to be the entry point for our generate cards method. So I'm going to say generate cards. We're going to add a tag on top of this so that Unity knows we need to create a menu for it. And that tag is just menu item. You may have to import the type here using Unity Editor. And the parameter is the menu name. So I'm just going to say this is YouTube. And when you put a slash, that's going to add a submenu. So we'll see a YouTube menu. And the actual option to start gener or executing this method is going to be uh, generate card data from CSV. Boom. So if I save this and come back to Unity, we should see a YouTube menu up here. And when we open our YouTube menu, we have a generate card data from CSV option here. Uh, that's just a start, though. Now, the first thing we want to do is actually check the object that we have selected. Like I said, the idea is that you will import your CSV as an asset, select it here, and then click this menu item to begin generating the card data. So in order to check the active object, um, there's actually an API for that. So we'll say if selection.activeObject. So this will get whatever's selected in the editor right now. We want to first of all check if it's null. If it's null, we'll return because there's nothing we can do about that. All right, so I've created the small helper method to check if it's a CSV file. We're just checking to see if the path ends with .csv. It's a pretty simple way of checking, but you can always roll your own um, error correcting. Of course, being as it's an editor script, it doesn't really matter that much since this will never be run in-game. So not much validation is required there. So the first thing we're going to do is if 
if we're not a CSV file and the full path is going to be path dot full path is going to be equal to system.io.path.combine. What we're going to combine is the current directory that we're in, and then we're going to combine asset database.getasset path based on our selection.active object. So we're reconstructing the full path to the asset based on our current directory and the asset path that Unity returns to us. So when you get asset path, it's relative to the current directory. So just to ensure there's no issues with relativity or anything, we are arguing an absolute file path here. So if this is not a CSV file, we'll uh, log an error and then return. So now that we have confirmed that the selected object is a CSV file and not anything else, we're going to actually do the reading here. So I'm going to say we need a list of dictionary and the dictionary is a string object pair like that. And this is our raw CSV data. And then we're going to call CSV reader, which is a static class in the namespace CSV reading, dot read. And we're going to pass it the absolute path, which is what we have selected when we execute the script. So at this point, we've got all our CSV data raw inside of this assuming that this read correctly. We're going to check and make sure that our count is greater than zero, else we'll log an error and return. How, okay, how can we logically iterate over this and generate our data? Well, you have to iterate over the list, and essentially each entry in the list is a small object. And instead of being represented as an object where you type object.property, it's essentially going to be something like this. So it'll be our raw CSV data at any given index. And then you're going to give it another index. And this is actually the key that you want to read. And where you get that key is, if we come to the example CSV, the key values are all the very first row up here. Like I said, all of these apply to each of these rows. Any of these data points are going to have any of these, except for maybe the effect. So I should just be able to say at card, and this is how I will get the name of the card. And similarly, if I wanted to get the attack, I would do this. And this is all bound to the CSV data here, exactly as you'd see it here you'd get the key for that entry. So this would get the card name and the attack of the first entry in the data. Now, of course, these are all strings, and we'll convert those and parse those properly once we're generating our scriptable objects, but we're not quite there yet. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and create another, another method here. I want to make sure that I pass this into this function. And this function is going to do the actual generation of the card, but we have to have confirmation first. Uh, but we'll write this small generation method first. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over, iterate over every entry in the list, and we're going to store our potential card like this. And this is actually a dictionary string object. And it's going to be at CSV data given the index. Okay, so like I said before, if we wanted to debug.log any of this, we could do something like this. Let's say card number, and that's potential card at the number. Like that. We could say potential card at card like this to get the name. And then we can also say, we can also say, potential card at effect to get the effect. So we're going to debug log all of this. And then just because I'm going to say if I is greater than eight, we'll break out of the loop. Um, and this is just for testing. So what I'm going to do next is display the confirmation dialog. 
and that's using editor utility dot display dialog and this will return true or false based on the input so if the user basically presses ok to go ahead you'll get true otherwise you'll get false and in this dialog I'm going to use the CSV data length or count rather to figure out how many entries we're going to be creating confirmed oops I forgot an argument here yes and no and if confirmed then we will perform generation and we'll pass it our CSV data here so if we go through this now checking to make sure our active object is not null if our active object is not a CSV file we return otherwise we read the data from the CSV if we get enough data from the CSV we display a confirmation dialog and if we confirm then we're going to go ahead and perform the generation in which we iterate over the data and right now we're just debugging so Let's go ahead and come back here. We have our CSV selected. I'll clear the console here. We should see eight entries in our log. So if I go to YouTube, generate card data from CSV, it says, are you sure you want to create 682 entries? Just to confirm, if we look at our CSV, scroll all the way down, the last, or the last line is 683, the last entry is 682. The last line is 683 because of course, first line is column definitions in a CSV. So I'm gonna click yes. And we've got a couple debug information bits right here. You can see uh, we wanted card number, name, and effect. And on cards that don't have an effect, you can see the effect text is just null. There's nothing there. We can predict that and generate a different type of card based on whether or not there's effect text or not. So you can see all the normal monsters don't have any kind of text with them, and all these effect monsters have a little bit of text after them. So it was successful. Uh, that was just the first nine entries. I assume that the other 682 will go just as smooth. 